Hey guys, welcome to Safi Max in the video part 3 on the topic a particle in infinite potential well. In this video, I have planned to review quickly the physical reasons behind what I did in video part 2 for getting the wave function for the particle under such a potential and would finally write the time dependent generic wave function for infinite potential well. I do this for the purpose of highlighting the procedure for solving Schrodinger wave equation for such type of bone problems and I believe it will provide a good insight to the viewers for solving other boundary wave problems in quantum mechanics. So the first question that needs to be answered is this, why did I use the time independent Schrodinger wave equation at the first place? Why didn't I use the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation? I have given a detailed answer to this question in one of my videos on Schrodinger wave equation, but here I will just mention the reason behind this choice. I used the time independent Schrodinger wave equation because the potential for this problem is in fact time independent. And when this is the case with the potential, the total wave function factorizes into two parts, one position dependent and the other time dependent. That is, the total wave function can be written for time independent potential in the form psi x of t equals chi of x times tau of t, where the function chi of x depends on position and the function tau of t depends on time only. Because of this factorization, for each value of quantum number small n, the time dependent part constitutes a global phase in the form exponent minus iota e sub n times t divided by h bar and has no effect on the measurable quantities for a given value of n. So this is the reason I use time independent Schrodinger wave equation. Now let us move to what did I further do with the Schrodinger wave equation. Number one, first I checked the validity of each term in the Schrodinger wave equation and observed that the term constituted by the product of potential and wave function that is v of x times psi of x becomes infinite at the boundaries of the well and hence becomes non-physical. And to resolve the issue of non-physicality of Schrodinger wave equation at the boundaries, I utilize the concept of renormalization condition on the wave function, which guided me to conclude that the wave function must vanishes on the boundaries. This conclusion led me to the two boundary condition in the forms psi of 0 equals psi of a equals 0. That is the wave function immediately goes to 0 and on both boundaries one at x is equal to 0 and the, one, and the other at x is equal to a. With this information in hand, I solved the time independent Schrodinger wave equation in position space and use the concept of, for the solution of and use the concept for the solution of second order differential equation and wrote the following general functional form for the solution of wave function that is psi of x equals a times sine of k times x plus b times cos of k times x. I applied the two boundary condition one after the other. This procedure affects the value of b and led to the quantized value of parameter k. 
This means that the boundary conditions on the wave function led to the quantization of energy that I am going to discuss in the next video with detail. Finally, I normalize the wave function in order to ensure <coughs> that the probability interpretation of the wave function is valid. <coughs> And the final form of the stationary wave function was written in this form, where the n in the equation is called quantum number. This equation dictates that for every value of n, there exists a different wave function. Now, the time-dependent total wave function for a given n can be expressed in the form of this one equation that is psi n of x in t equals psi n of x multiplied with phi t where phi t in fact is the time dependent function in substituting the value of psi n of x from the above equation and putting the value of phi t I can finally put the total time dependent wave function in the form of this one result where exponent minus iota e times t divided by h bar is in fact the solution to time dependent part of the Schrodinger wave equation for a potential independent of time. So we see that the total wave function is in fact factorizable in the position and time parameters. This is the total wave function that is the time dependent wave function for a single value of quantum number n. Now, according to superposition principle of quantum mechanics, the most generic wave function would be the linear combination of all the possible wave functions. That is, the total wave function, that is, a most general solution can be expressed in the form of psi x sub t equal summation over n c of c sub n times psi sub n of x in t where c sub n are called probability amplitudes and satisfied the normalization condition sub summation over n c in mod squared equals 1. In the next video we will see that every number of quantum number n in this equation corresponds to a different energy level. Therefore, the modulus square of the probability amplitude in fact gives the probability of finding the particle in that particular energy level. For example, C1 mod square gives the probability of the particle in state with energy equal to E1 and similarly C2 mod square gives the probability of the particle to be in the state with energy E2 and so forth. In video part 4 on this topic, I will discuss the effects of the presence of quantum number n on the physics of the bound particle and would compare the quantum mechanical results with the corresponding classical results.